All right, now let's, so let's look at the molecule water, the molecule itself, and what that actually means. So what we want to be able to get out of this is we want to understand the basic structure of water and, and how and the impacts that can have, right? And when we do this, we should be able to represent a model of water in a few different ways. Um, and also explain the different components of it as we represent it. So water to start off with is a covalent polar molecule of one oxygen, and, let's just see, we, right here, one oxygen and one, oh, sorry, two hydrogens. Cool. So this is two simple ways to draw it. This is a distribution of electrons. This is a distribution of charges. So that's a two representations already. Here is probably the representation we'll be most familiar with by the end, which is the Lewis dot structure. And we can see that you've got the two dots here, these two electrons, these two electrons, this electron, and this electron come from the oxygen, whereas this electron and this electron both come from the two hydrogens. So it's a covalent bonded molecule. And what that means is that if we look up here in the left-hand corner, we're actually sharing electrons. So oxygen now has eight electrons in its valence shell, this one comes from hydrogen, though, and this one comes from hydrogen. Hydrogen have obtained a full outer shell by sharing this one from the oxygen and this one from the oxygen. So they're sharing. So it shares a lot of electrons between the two. And it has two single covalent bonds. So sometimes oxygen can be double bonded. In this case, it is two single covalent bonds. It's also a polar molecule. And what this actually means is that there's a distribution of charge. So it's got a net charge of zero, it's neutral. But if we look at different parts of the of the atom, the molecule, it will have a positive zone and a negative zone. And its electropositive zone will be around the hydrogens, okay? Because the electrons that are near the hydrogens, uh, these ones here, they are held very close to the oxygen molecule. And these two electrons are held very close to the oxygen molecule. They never get around this end of the hydrogen. Okay, So you can see that around the hydrogen there are two positive zones. There's a positive area there where there's no electrons. There's just a stubby nucleus poking out. And we have an abundance of electrons here around only eight protons. So there's ten electrons around only eight protons. So this has a negative zone. Um, so the overall charge is zero. They, they all equal out, but again, the two because the two zones cancel each other out. Now, the polarity leads to hydrogen bonds. Um, hydrogen bonds aren't hard um, molecular bonds. They are intermolecular bonds, so between molecules, and they tend to be they're what we call an electrostatic force more than they are a hard sharing or, or giving of electrons. So a dipole-dipole force is what this is called, um, and it attracts the water uh, molecules to each other. For example, here we have a positive end in our water and a negative end, like we talked about. That's called a dipole. So you have a so diamonding two. We have a positive pole and a negative pole. And the reason it's called and that's the symbol for negative pole. That's the symbol for positive pole. And the reason it's called dipole-dipole is you got this negative dipole here is attracted to this positive dipole over there. And this means that water molecules stick to each other. Water is sticky. Um, these are specifically known as hydrogen bonds, and they're an example of a dipole-dipole. So that's a type of dipole-dipole bond. And yeah, water is sticky, which is cool. Um, now remember, dipole-dipole forces are intermolecular bonds. Now, I hope that made a lot of sense. If it didn't, put, comment, put questions in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. Bye now.